Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pequeño Pod with Senor Pequeños. If you want episodes early, bonus episodes, special guest interviews, and other perks, please consider supporting us on Patreon, which will give you all of those things for the price of one coffee cup per month. You can find us at patreon.com slash pequeñopod, P-E-Q-U-E-N-O pod. Otherwise, enjoy this free episode, and I hope you have an awful day. I was supposed to see Mario on Friday, too, and then it, like, 5 30 i was like i'm i'm still on the toilet oh <laughs> chicken I like, yeah i was like Ugh. do you want me to kiss it better is this my butt hole <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay say we something. have a young child on the call with us today <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we me. should have a guest that's just a baby I can, I can hey, yo, you got that. a baby we can have on the podcast? <laughs> I can yeah. provide that. I'm a nanny for babies. Oh, oh I what? thought you were going to say because you, I thought you were going to say because you shit all the time. I thought you were going to say because you're a lady. I'm like, dang, uh, we could, uh, dude, our babies could be friends. I'm pregnant. Surprise. <laughs> dude, babies are, uh-uh. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I babies genuinely are, don't know. Uh-uh. How do people my age have kids? How are they taken care of? Other human beings. That sounds awful. I'm barely responsible for myself. Friend from elementary school. She has a kid who's also about to turn three. My cousin and her her baby are like the same exact age. And this girl looks exactly like my friend did in elementary school now. And it's so weird. I'm like, (laughs) she looks just like you. Like where? And I'm like, everywhere. (laughs) They're multiplying. If I had a kid that looked like me, I would throw it away. It's how the whole thing in Egypt started back in the day. (laughs) Pharaoh's like, man, this thing looks exactly like me. Get rid of them all. (laughs) (laughs) This thing, (laughs) ugly. There were no mirrors back then, so they didn't know. (laughs) Water. Harry Potter, they have like the living images. That like scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. I was like, they're just... Their souls are just trapped in there forever. Yeah, yeah. Does that is that ever explained? Because that's something that I think that's just a dumb little idea she threw out there, and no one stopped her. But I mean, it makes no fucking sense. The moving pictures because they, they act independently. It's not on a loop. They're like yes. you can talk to them and shit. I'm like, yeah, they can interact. How? Yeah, dude. How? Have, have you seen Harry Potter? That's the one thing you're concerned about. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Look at the Harry Potter. Daniel, did you see what I sent you earlier? Yes, I, you, the one topic you've ever sent to our chat, I did. We'll yeah, get to that in a second. The one topic I've ever We'll get sent. to that in a second, yeah. He's it's like, just, no! Stay tuned, stay no, tuned, everyone. No, the there's going to be a Harry Potter reboot. We'll talk shut about up. it Shut up, don't talk about it yet! Yeah, to, be continued. to be continued. I will, I will shut you up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so starting the episode, we're reading we're reading any new Apple Podcast reviews. If you want to leave us some kind of cursed review, we will read Ooh. it if it's a, if it's a good one. Oh, I recognize this name. Um, so this is by Ashton uh, Pinedo, uh, little tongue smiley face thing. Hey, I want to say I love your podcast, and you make and you all make my day by goofing off and chaotic storytelling. I appreciate that you guys take the time to make these episodes with your little hectic schedules. I am also happy that one of you guys is seeing and liking, replying to my comments on YouTube. That's me. Aww. That is me, yeah. <laughs> they don't do anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't. P.S. If you do read my note on the podcast, that will be the greatest present ever. Well, there you go. Happy That's birthday. That's nice. Well, now Happy you gotta birthday. cut it out. Yeah, now I'm just gonna delete that whole thing. Just censor <laughs> it completely. So this, for anyone who is interested, on Sp- so if you go review us on Apple Podcasts, and then we'll read that. And then head over to Spotify. And Spotify has Q&A on podcast episodes now. That it just like prompts at the bottom. I don't have to take a look at how it lo- how it works, but basically asks like, "What do you think about this episode?" And then we have like a bunch of replies to it. I just didn't even know it existed until last time. So we read cool. a few. <clears throat> anyway, one of them. Let's start with a positive one. This one is from episode thirty-five. Positive one. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this one says always. This one says always funny. I'm like, oh, I like that one. This is episode thirty-nine. Uh, Okay, first one by Kala182. It's fucking funny as hell. Nice. Oh, uh, the next hell next yeah. one from next one from Shrimp Gaming. I'm gonna morb. Sure. <laughs> of course. Uh, the next one from Esther. It says the fact I've seen the movie with the pants dad. <laughs> the pants. You mean the, onward? The, uh, yeah, that's the, the one. The that's gay the ogre one. movie. Yeah. <laughs> Great that's movie. The baby I watch. Hello, baby. Yeah, Daniel made fun of this baby's head. And Wait, I can't 
she was born with no soft spots on her head. Like her, her skull was fully fused. So she has to get a surgery, like once she turns one in like two months. I didn't, I didn't make like fun of the baby's head. You sent apart. a video. You sent a video to our group chat with the fucking Dwayne Johnson sound effect on that baby's head. That's oh you, God. you asshole. Like this one's from Cog. Thank fuck I wasn't eating during any of this episode since it's so rancid. Uh, oh, true. Oh and my then God. A, some of them have too many details. <laughs> and then some. And then something in German. Ich liebe diesen Podcast. Bitte mach wieder. Ich habe kein Folgen mehr. That's German, by the way. Oh, yeah, no. I was like, ich, ich. <laughs> Sounds Russian to me. The translation is, I love this podcast. Please continue. I'm out of episodes. That's nice. Oh. My favorite one is the one right after from Jay that says, this gets gayer and gayer, and I love it. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah, so I'm feeling a connection. Me and you. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel is just as straight as he ever was, but it's getting a lot gayer. <laughs> yep. uh, this is episode 40. This is the last one. Another W episode, as always, uh, from okay. some weird Russian. P Man says, I love this podcast. It's the greatest podcast of all time. Right. My only regret is that I wasn't listening from the start. I've been here since episode 10. All right. Shrimp oh, Gaming says, Walkie nice. Slush. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Sulkin yeah, says, like As I'm listening. First episode? <laughs> Sulkin says, as I'm listening to my impression on this episode, is horrible. I hate eggs and peas and glass-filled boobs. It took me 40 episodes to realize it, but it sucks bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Galleus Noah says, goofy podcast, you goofy fuckers. Thank you, thank you. Dead Mancer says, been- this episode broke my knees because I was so distracted laughing that I fell down the stairs. <laughs> 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 That's good. Ethan W. says, amazing. Also, here are the instructions to make napalm. Get a cup of gasoline and put styrofoam in it and let it melt, and then you are good to go. Damn. True. Stop. You can make <laughs> napalm from that? Yeah, you didn't no. know that? I didn't know no. that. <laughs> last, last two. One from Dingle that says pure insanity, and one from uh, Smiley Face that says, really funny. I, I love listening to it when I'm playing golf, and which is an old man support. I like the challenge of trying to get old people not to stare at me in concern while I smile and cackle for no reason. That's great. I love that. Playing Wait, alone. you don't want old people to look at you? They are mean on the golf course. Like, I've never yeah, they're rented a golf cart because they're normally expensive. And then the old people just, like, pull up in them and they're, like, whipping. The one time when there was, like, a lightning storm and I was on the last hole and me and my best friend were like, we want to just end the game. Like, we're already losing. I don't care. Like, this match is not going to go well. And I'm already past, like, the amount of, like, hits I can get on this hole to make any points. So it's not going to matter. And, and my golf coach was like, J- just keep it going. Keep it going. Play along. And it's, like, a really long par five. And I'm like, please, please stop. And there's, like, you see lightning in the background and we're holding, like, long metal rods. And I'm just like, can we please be done? On bald grass. Yeah, it's like you are yes. the tallest thing for yes. miles. Yes. Right. And uh, I'm just I'm just having to wipe the the handle part between my crotch because that's what we have to do when it's raining because that's Ooh. like our only dry spot or like uh, yeah that's normally huh. it. So you're just like you're just moving it back and couldn't forth. be me <laughs> uh, I hate it there was that's my, my only f- wet spot sorry <laughs> friend took a picture of me one time and then she's like candids and took cute photos of everybody and then it was me literally like wiping the club between my crotch and it was like the gross pictures of me and she posted it and and she's like jamboree day and I was like oh god Jesus I swear she's making this up. I, am I just going crazy? You've never talked about golf before. You I don't your know. Voice, your voice wasn't coming through, so that's why I cut you off. I couldn't hear oh. you. My golf coach was the one who dangled the other teacher out of the window by her feet. I told you that story. And the one, and that, that was the same day when he threw like the garbage at me and my friend and was like, because that's what you are. And we were like, <gasps> <gasps> what yeah. school did you go to? Uh, Alcatraz? Hell. Yeah, no like, kidding. You know, my school, they say that it used to be a former women's prison. Oh, I mean, they say that because <laughs> it used it. to be a women's prison. <laughs> like, it might have been. <laughs> no, it was, wasn't it? I, I Isn't think, this a confirmed fact? I, I think it might have been. It's we had a whole 20-minute conversation really on the structure of the cafeteria being because yeah, it was from a prison. It's exactly like the setup of, like, the main holding area, like, when the, the guards can look over at everybody, like, Ooh. eating and, like the 
Yeah, yeah. The this seems very easily look a lot. This seems very easily look upable. Like, how is this in question? I thought this was for, for a fact. What's your school called? I'm googling it right now. Kent Lake uh, High School. Kent Lake High School was designed by the architectural firm Burr Lawrence Rising and was Burr. a prison gate and built in 1970, 1997. Built Dang to right. accommodate 1,600 students, a two-story facility. Damn. Uh, we have a four-month-old um, headline Maybe. from the Kent Reporter. Kent Lake <laughs> High School teacher arrested for investigation of sex crimes. Yes, oh! He, f- he, uh, he was like an admin, I think, and I guess he was getting pictures from like a 14-year-old recently turned 15. Like, so she's <laughs> a freshman. And she Go was on. too scared to come forward about it for a long time. And I think... It said one of her friends made her come forward and talk about it, but Good. yeah, icky poo poo. That's not the first time that's happened there. Oh hell I no! I think icky poo poo is an understatement. Yeah. yeah. Whatever mm-hmm. happened to we have all these shows about vigilantes, but like we don't have any. Like why don't we have them? Guys, let's why, start why? a team. Can we? Can we start killing yes. like rapists Lanty and molesters? In Seattle. Yeah, we actually have a vigilante. He came to my really? school a couple of times. Yeah, he came to my Wait, school. Wait, whoa, he whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Like as a guest or did he just walk in? <laughs> you can't be a vigilante and walk into a school. His name is Phoenix Jones. <laughs> look look up the vigilante from Seattle right now, That's a right dumb now, name. Daniel. Look it, him up it right now. I think that might actually be his name. Hey, Jamie, name. look that up. What's it called? Felix. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> Felix Jones? Phoenix. We can't like, hear you. <laughs> Phoenix, Phoenix, like the fire oh, Phoenix. Phoenix <laughs> Jones? Oh my god! No! <laughs> spill oh! it! Spill it! He looks like Bible Man. <laughs> he does wear a costume. What? Dude, this is, and this he is the has worst. stopped like perch purse snatchers and like beat them up and stuff. He's been arrested a couple times. Probably Dude, if you're I, walking into schools, yeah. I can't. I can't. This is the dumbest uh. looking thing I've ever fucking seen. <gasps> I'm just going to edit in the picture instead of, I can't share it. Sorry. Yeah, she's got it there on her phone. Oh, yeah. my God. What did he vigil at? <laughs> <laughs> that you can't turn the neck. So he's just going to be like. <laughs> New podcast explores the rise and fall of the real life superhero from Seattle. Rise and fall. What happened since I was in high school? <laughs> oh, God. Did you see him from- walk in? Yeah, he came in his costume and everything. Like he what? Like, yeah, he was like, "Hey, he what now?" <laughs> <laughs> in his little uh, tight suit, perfectly yes. formed around each testicle. <laughs> yeah, the, around All the, the butt kids cheeks. Are like, Whoa! Yeah, well, I'm surprised the school let him talk. What the fuck did he talk about? Justice, <laughs> justice. See, look at the crotch. It's it's tight. Man, it's tight that is it. I can see the bulge and the blur. There's light glinting off it. It's so shiny. Ah. Yeah, he he's for real. Yeah, the the head is kind of dinky. <laughs> That's a real like, penis. <laughs> it looks like a thumb. Like that, he wouldn't survive episode one of the boys. I'm assuming. I haven't oh, seen I need the to show, watch that. but God, I need to watch that it show's so bad. Up. It's Let's funny. start. I need to start a show with people. Um, this, this is oh, I'm talking interviewed by a bunch I'm, of I'm, I'm, I'm talking a, I'm talking like the Punisher like I want someone that's killing like rapists molesters and like gang members you know what I mean like I don't want someone that's like it's taking gang purchase. members wow Daniel you're acting like those people have a choice sometimes Juliana makes fun of the cancel culture of the internet by acting it out on me and people will take her seriously and it, it and you know what I was irritated? getting canceled for you know what I was getting canceled yeah because it's because it's me people actually believe it you know something I was getting a uh, quote, you know, I think people were commenting on this time. Huh. Um, so I had a movie review that went viral, which is not something I've said more than twice. But uh, basically the Princess Bride, they remade the Princess Bride during COVID. You said COVID. his mustache looked like a pedo stash and everybody was like. Ah! I, didn't, I didn't say that. Okay, so you guys know the Princess Bride, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. So they remade it during COVID with like mm-hmm. 88 different actors uh, apparently it was a Quibi what? thing, which is why no one fucking heard of it. Um, yeah. But it was directed by Jason Reitman, who is the son of the guy that directed Ghostbusters and is the guy that made the new Ghostbusters, I think if I've got that right. Um, anyway, so a bunch of really cool actors in it, all really famous, really cool actors, and then King Batch. And it makes no sense why he's in there, but I <laughs> fucking hate him. So I said that in the review. I said, all these people are really cool, blah, 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 this person, this person, this person. Fuck King Batch because I hate him. 
And I said that thinking this video is not gonna get more than like 3,000 views, right? It has like 250 on Instagram and like 800,000 on, <laughs> on uh, TikTok. Or I should clarify, 250,000 on Instagram and 800,000 on TikTok. TikTok comments are fine. Instagram, because it's becoming Twitter, I shouldn't say becoming, it is Twitter now. All the fucking self-righteous keyboard warrior asshats that have no friends and privileged enough to have no job and they can just comment this shit all the time. They were like, why do you hate King Batch, huh? We don't know who he is, but why would you, why would you single him out? You, what are you, racist? You don't like black people? people on the internet, like, they were not alive before Vine time. They were like, I've never heard they of this weren't. man in my life. <laughs> Comically large spoon. Exactly. See, Cultural <laughs> shift right there. That was what a bunch of, I, thankfully a lot of the comments were supporting me because a bunch of comments were like, why are you hating King Badge? And then all the replies were comically large spoon. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a fantastic actor. He's been in so many things. I think he was in Black Jesus. I think he was in this. King Batch? Are we talking other about King Batch? Other movie where he. Uh, King Batch was in, uh, was, he was in Greenland, with, uh, which was actually a decent movie. And then he was just in the most dog shit movie I've seen in, in the last year. And not even necessarily because of him. It just wasn't a good movie. It was called Fear or something like super basic. Yeah. I, I, it's been too long. Like, I don't keep up with him, obviously. But like, I because people were like, why do you not like him? And I was like, actually, I'm kind of trying to remember the reasons why. But I, then I was like, oh, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. All his jokes were about like sexual assault and sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? I forgot I about that. that. Oh, for it, sure. I mean, they everyone's were, on They weren't were. outright like that. It was like... Defend uh, the man, Juliana. <laughs> Why don't you? Uh, 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 well, ooh, I was going to describe what it, what it consisted of, but I guess I won't. He, it would be like, you know, a girl is walking by. She got a big booty. He would go and find, like, influencer-type girls because, you know, he would always be on, like, the popular page of Vine. So mm -hmm. they would go and meet up with him. And they would do a collab, and it would just be, like, zooming in on the butt. And then it would be, uh -oh. like, you know, all the guys on the video turning and looking at the butt. And no, of no, course. no, there was, there was that. Yes, you are correct. But then there was They're also, like, like actual girls. sexual harassment jokes. Like, w the guy that will not leave someone alone and, like, pulls them into a closet. And uh, there was one where, he, like, he actually rapes someone in an elevator. I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. There was a video where he just rapes someone in an elevator and that is that's the joke that's the joke is that it's supposed to be funny um okay but it's but it's funny because he raped a guy you know that's the funny thing you know so that's that's oh. that yeah so but it, what the funniest thing was the initial person that commented on the instagram post they were like are you being racist or what like 10 hours later they comment again they were like okay now i see it never mind <laughs> like i've never heard of this guy in my life this guy. they're all five years old. They're all kids. They don't know who the hell he is. Anyway, moving on from King Batch. Let's get to the actual topic of uh, the one topic Juliana has ever put in the chat. Uh, you want to talk about it, Juliana, and why you hate it so much? Uh, I don't actually really know. I just saw some video uh, earlier today that, that popped up, and it was like somebody discussing the new Harry Potter uh, reboot, and the person was like, no! And I guess they were a Harry Potter fan, and they're like, why would they remake everything? Apparently, they want to make it a series, like a TV series on HBO with a totally new cast. Wait. And every season will be a different book, like a different, or a different year at Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I love yeah, this people idea were pissed because so they were like, why don't they make new stories? Because, well, me and Daniel have been complaining a lot about, you know, a lot of movies and films are just remakes lately or yes. sequels to current like franchises yeah entities whatever right so they just want to reboot the whole thing and make like a like a newer thing because they're like oh harry potter that's like millennials so they want to reboot it so that younger people like like harry potter now and people are also like oh so jk rowling is gonna be working on this and it's like yes Yes. And I'm like, mm, yes, mm, yes. What does she have to work on? They're in the books already. Like, the work is done. What the fuck Seriously? is she going to add to it? You've only <laughs> made the movies one time, and they were so impactful. They're remaking Lord of the Rings. They're remaking Harry Potter. Leave Wait, them alone. Dear yes. God. Yes. Lord of the Agreed. Rings. Agreed. Agreed. Were they remaking Lord of the Rings? 
not remaking it, but they keep milking it. It's like you take this great thing and you drain it dry. You know what happens when you drain it dry? There's nothing fucking left. Yes, they- I liked Rings of Power. I'll be honest. No. I it looked fucking gorgeous, didn't it? Is that just me? I didn't watch it. I don't want to. The bro I, face. You should. You actually should. I had no faith in it. It got a lot and- of bad reviews. Yeah, no, but they I were all spam reviews. They were, were all spam reviews. Yeah, no, they were trolling. Like, I watched it expecting nothing. Because the, the key with me with these, with the Lord of the Rings, is that, like, the look, it has to have that look of Lord of the Rings. Right. It has to have that scale and the actual, like, um, craftsmanship behind the sets and all that stuff. And it had all that. And I was like, how the hell did the bold Bezos man actually make this look good? It because looked... Because he's not in charge of it? It I looked... <laughs> It looked so good, and they were using a bunch of matte paintings again. They were using scale models. They were using, like, uh, practical effects for stuff. Uh, the, the creature effects were so good. So, I mean, I didn't even care that much about the story necessarily, but it looked I, – I, I got the Lord of the Rings tingles for the first time. I didn't even like The Hobbit. So, I mean, it felt like I was in that world again. So, I don't know, but that's just me. I don't want to, like, force anyone to watch it. But it looked so hot. I was, and it had a really huh? good diverse cast, which also everyone was going ape shit about. They were like, "You can't have black elves because of whatever fucking reason." I was like, "Who cares? Who cares? I don't. No one gives a shit. It's already a magical land, and nothing exactly. matters." The same reason blue. people didn't want the black mermaid. They were like, "Technically, uh, it, she oh wouldn't be God. black underwater," and everyone was like, "Technically, mermaids don't exist." <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just I don't, I don't ridiculous. know. Ridiculous. For it's you. like behind them not being black underwater. What is? I don't understand that. The sunlight doesn't reach the. the, the, the. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Here, part of me that gets into a whole other conspiracy. Part of me thinks that companies. That there are no underwater plants. No, no, no. I'm sure that there are people that actually. No, no, no. Not, not that. Shut up. Underwater no, doesn't of, exist. No, I'm Fish sure there are. are I'm sure there are ten people that actually have that opinion, that very racist opinion, and stuff. But like to the to the extent of all that we were seeing online, part of me makes it. Part of me ma- is wondering if these companies like have, you know, five thousand Twitter accounts that they've just had backed up for the last five years, and they will like propagate that stuff and like snowball it because okay. it gets them so much more attention than if no one said anything. And it's happened for every single new HBO show, even on ones that no one cares about. And I'm like, that's. It seems a little weird. You know, like Game of Thrones, right? The new Game of Thrones came out. And the internet was going ape. Sh- internet was going ape shit that like uh, the lead character was a woman, and I'm like, yeah, but that was the case in Game of Thrones, was it not? And no one right. freaked out then, you know. So I'm like, what's new? Something, something's not adding up. I don't know. Oh, I said, but we got to see her boobies immediately. <laughs> <laughs> in the new Game of Thrones, I don't remember that. No, Daenerys Targaryen. She, uh, she was a booby lady. Oh, you mean in the Game of Thrones one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There do tend to be those in a lot of they're, media. They're, they're they kind of went away from that in the new one. I I like I haven't seen Game of Thrones, but I've seen House of the Drag House of the Dragon or whatever it was. I thought it's that was penises good. now. It's about time. It's a, it really I, is. I'm kind of why honestly. why is why isn't there more male nudity in movies? I don't understand. For it. real, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I am a feminist, right? And I hate over sexualization of women. However, if you make both of them sluts, it cancels out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they will always, like, it's just a full naked woman, and then the dude will be standing next to her, but with a rock covering up his his junk. And I'm like, no, No, come on. It'll be the guy getting up out of bed to close the blinds, and you just see the ass crack. It's always just the butt, right? But but it's never actually the actor. It's never his, they have butt stunt doubles. Like, they have butt replacements. Yes, look it up. Most of the men don't show their real ass. That's why it's it's from behind, because you could never... Tell it was not their face. Dude, this is like when I found out Santa wasn't real. (laughs) It's so sad because the All these male asses I've been seeing in movies aren't real. And it's obviously still them, their body. You see like all of their defining features, like a mole on their arm. You know it's the same person and there's no editing out to have like a body double. It's always a booty double with the men though. And I'm like, what the? You know something? you know something interesting? Uh, I don't know how I, I know this because I haven't seen the movies, but uh, I think it's because um, I think it's just because of special effects stuff. They were talking about I think it was an episode of Corridor Crew. They were talking about like weird ways people view special effects. But I think it was Fifty Shades of Grey. She was like, that's not even my real junk. She was like, they basically like add like 
like the pubic hair to basically obscure like the CGI is not crazy good. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But like someone, some company somewhere is like, we got, we got a job. And they're like, all right, everyone get out the vagina drawings. We're going at like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that show weird. that in that movie? I don't know. I've never seen the movie, so I don't even know. I, I thought people didn't like the movies because they didn't show enough. I saw like movie 20 minutes guys. of the first one, and then me and my friends were like, turn this off. And then we saw the third <sighs> one, like me and a bunch of my friends. It was all guys. And then there were five of us, and then there were five other people in the theater, and they were girls the same age as us. And my friends are just like hooting and hollering the whole movie, like making like really stupid like yeah, monkey noises. Like they're like, ooh, ooh. and like anytime boobies come up on the screen, like they're they're being really stupid on purpose. And I'm like, oh, you guys are ruining their girls' night. But then they kept laughing, so it was okay. In the end, they thought we, it was we, funny. We've gotten so far off topic of Harry Potter because everyone seemed to have feelings about that. But Maya's our yeah. guest. Wanna, Nudity in ask- Harry Potter. Minus. <laughs> <laughs> Lucius Malfoy, though? Does yep. he have platinum blonde pubes? <laughs> um, I will find straight, out. Straight. Straight blonde pubes. Like, they're not curl or anything. It's just <laughs> as matte as his hair. <laughs> people want more is uh, at least what I was seeing online when people were like, oh, I don't want a reboot. I want them to expand on the universe rather than remake the same stuff. I don't want that either. Class. Just leave just it alone. Make, just make new <laughs> shit. The they funniest were like, thing is, though, they were like, "We want more Snape lore." How did he go from no, a, a baddie no. to being the inside man for Dumbledore? To being an incel? <laughs> Snape I, already was baddie. that. He was. He was. <laughs> he was initially. Snape an incel. is a dumbass. Always ass. stayed an incel. I love Alan Rickman to death, but oh. the character of Snape. You can't say is, that. Uh, you can't asshole. say that. I can't say know. what. You said you love Alan Rickman to death. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Adam Driver as a young Professor Snape? You've given this too much thought, haven't you? <laughs> don't. Stop. That's actually don't really good casting. Uh, yeah, everybody That's online true. is like, they should do that. But I'm like, please, God, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop. Leave Harry Potter so, alone. I don't, I don't want it. Every, every remake that's basically come uh-huh. out, minus, minus like five, have all been terrible, and I hate Hollywood for doing it. That being said, weirdly enough, this Harry Potter idea, I'm kind of okay with. Or I mean, at least I kind of want to hear them out, right? Because we've kind of talked about this. We were like, I'm not a huge fan of the movies, like, after I had read the I don't books. Because like they just no, felt like good. super quick summaries, and I was like, you're not even, like, in his head like the books are. Like, it, the main reason I connected was because of all this shit he's going through and thinking about, but you can't get to that from the movie. So, I mean, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just so hard to summarize that giant-ass fucking book in, like, in two hours. So, like, a show, we've talked yeah. about that a show would make more sense, like, a whole season That's dedicated to a book, mm-hmm. you know. But everyone, like, everyone is saying no. And I'm like, well, yes. Yeah, sh- People were like, oh, they need to touch on things that weren't discussed that were, like, big plot points that they kind of skimmed over or things they totally ignored about like the logistics of how stuff worked there, right? And they're like, they're gonna, they should go over that in, in the the TV show. And I'm like, are they gonna go into how they made the one black character sound like a slave name? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, that mm. one that we joked about was that like one of the things they cut out of the movies is like Hermione's constantly trying to free the Dobby things. What are they called? The house, house elves. House elves, yeah. She's trying to free them because she's like, they're slaves. There's, there's nothing right about it. And everyone's like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, Hermione. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> what they're doing. That's what they're doing for an entire book. And they just never touch on it in the movie. But yeah, I'm, and they I'm give him the a book. sock. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing the book and I'm like, this is a little problematic, right? That everyone in the wizard universe, including Dumbledore, is like, oh, I'm kind of okay with these little things doing my dishes and... <laughs> washing my washing my wizard pants. I don't really care, honestly. I was like, whoa, whoa, that, that dude. That old house elf who's also kind of like racist. Creature. He's like a self-hating, creature, self-hating. Uh, I, d- I don't creature. know. That's oh, that's his name. His name? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. He he's the one who's like. Oh, shit. He's like, leave things the way they are. This is how it's always been, and it's gonna stay that way. Shut the fuck up, Dobby. And I'm like. Wait. Oh. I 
don't remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This ha- yeah. yeah, this happened. He, this happened he for sure. Worked for like the black family. Is that who? <laughs> the what? Their, the, the what? their last name. Their last name is Bla- Serious Black's family. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Creature worked for them, and yeah, Dobby's like the only house elf that's ever taken any money, and he's the only one that's free, and all the other elves hate him. And they were like, no, we want to work for no money, like it's always been. And he's like, that's fucking stupid. And yeah. then they just basically fight about it, the whole book. And then Dobby dies, and all the other elves are like, you get what you're coming to you, man. You deserve it's so that. so sad. <laughs> they were all like, yeah, well. That's what happens when you try to be a free elf. Oh, Get that's pretty up. much what exactly happens. He dies, and they're all like, "Well, <laughs> good riddance." <laughs> like, ah, ah. There's a lot in the books where it's like, ah, but they're they are very good, and most of the time, I will say. Someone put a meme on TikTok though. They were like, when J.K. Rowling realizes that uh, McGonagall teaches transfiguration and not cisfiguration. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so geez, funny. Don't get me started on her, man. It's such a Rutt-row. it's such an interesting like crossroads for people though. I because it's like if you don't want to watch something because of the way like that like that's totally that's totally fine, right? That's totally like verified. But then like people going after other people for it, like the right. video game. I don't know enough about the video game, but there was like a trans developer on the video the game that people were all like, "Fuck them, fuck the game." And I was like, "Do you not realize that you've just come full circle and now you're like just being like, you know." Uh, assholes about it like clearly exactly. the project has moved beyond her like and if you don't want to support it because of her that's totally fine there's nothing wrong with that at all but like don't don't push that judgment on other people I don't know it's I don't like that it's like it's yes book. she gets the money but so do all of the people <laughs> who worked on it <laughs> well it's Everybody like who cares money. at this point at this point she's so fucking rich it's like who cares if she gets any more money she's already a fucking 500 million dollars worth on the topic of the remakes in harry potter i did want to bring up some remakes that i despise that are going on that i thought uh you guys and maya might have some good interest on because uh, mm-hmm. it kind of to me it revolves around art but they are they, they may you may have already heard this maybe everyone fucking knows this i just don't have twitter and all that shit. but uh, they're remaking moana live action i'm gonna kill myself Turn oh my god I'm kill yay myself. what are your guys's reactions because mine I wanted to murder someone. <laughs> I'm going to shit my pants. Dude, they're not... We literally... Everybody's giving up on everything. Like, they do not all these try. people are coming out as assholes. And then all these stupid movies are being remade because nobody has any ideas anymore. We need... What did Dwight say in the office? We need, we need another plague. We what need did a, he say? Yes, yeah, yes. I say that all yeah. the time. We didn't. This one yeah. didn't work, though. It wasn't killing enough people quick. It's It's got a... Here's the problem, though. Like, it needs to be zombie stuff. It needs to be something that creates such a panic that all the poor people, like, overthrow the rich people. Because if it's calm enough of a plague, like COVID was, where basically all the rich profited exponentially higher than everyone else did off of it, that just Mm -hmm. makes everything fucking worse. We need it to be so bad that it just causes people to throw law to the wind and just guillotine all the rich. Mm -hmm. And I'm not joking at all. Just anarchy. Just, Just like a coup. Right? Basically. We don't need yeah. a plague to do that. Come on, yeah, exactly. guys. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I was talking <laughs> we can do to my that here. <laughs> I was talking to my brother about that last week and he's like, Who cares? They're just gonna get replaced, right? And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you kill enough of them. <laughs> yeah, I was like sorry. This is taking <laughs> I, a turn. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> They've got us on camera. Cut and cut. Um oh yeah, no, so Moana, yeah, yeah. Dwayne Johnson was like, Hey guys, we're remaking Moana. Is he gonna Moana. be Maui? Oh, yeah. Of course he is. Why the fuck wouldn't they make him Maui? Who else is going to fucking do it? Be a Jack? giant a giant buff guy, yeah. <laughs> so to me, I'm interested in what you guys think, but to me, the the live action remakes were always problematic anyway because, first of all... They're just ugly. They're, they're awful. Two, they're ugly. Three, they are taking away, like, the artist's freedom of why it was created in the first fucking place. Like, the reason it's so good and magical and the reason it was what it was is because the art, form, the art <laughs> form that it was written for was animation. And that's yes. why it looks as good as it does. And copying shots that were explicitly crafted for animation and art and just remaking those as, as live action hurts my inner soul. 
I don't get why they do it because don't people complain every single time about them? Like yes, yeah, but then they pay. Exactly. I was like, how much money are they making off of them? Right? Because it has to be like amount. decently expensive to make them. A lot of the time they have big name. Normally they've been like female leads, so like big name actresses being the the princess or like whoever the main character is. That has to be a lot of money to hire them, right? They don't do that it's kind of Disney. stuff for cheap, cheap. Yeah. Yeah, they there's have, like, most of, money. I think most of them are kind of in contracts and shit anyway. They're all jerking each other off, so it's like whatever. Uh, you know, but like, and again, with, look, well, that was the other thing I was going to say. Most of these that are, quote, live action aren't live action because most of the shit in them you can't do with live Without, action. Yeah. Yes, dear God. So if, what's if, the if, fucking point? Like the Lion like, King? Yes, exactly. Yeah, if, if it was like a play or like like the Dark Crystal or something, I would still not be thrilled with the idea of like a remake, but that'd be so cool. You know what I mean? Where it's like mostly like handmade effects and God, I hate everything so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It just seems like, I mean, again. I agree. They should do musicals and stuff because sometimes when they expand on that and they do like music related to the like story and stuff, I like that sometimes. Like there was no. like the little, the little Mermaid, the musical, Lion King, the musical is really pretty. You don't, you don't like Lion King, the musical? Oh, you mean make them into actual musicals performed on Broadway? Okay. Yes. I thought yes. you meant they should remake musicals into movies. And I was like, no, I no, shut the no. Fuck up. no, absolutely not. And that thank what you, I was you, saying, I was saying expanding, because like you were saying, don't do any more shit with any of the existing entities. And I'm like, well, I've seen some musicals that I like. Ben yeah. Daniel's like, no, no. And I was like, damn, I thought this guy was a theater I did kid. not say that. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Were you a theater kid? Yeah, for one I year. was and like, he was. The one year I was confident enough to grasp a hold of my fucking identity and actually did it. Yeah, it was the best That's year of awesome. my life. Yeah, and then I, I chickened out and I went to college for engineering because I felt uh, I felt that I wasn't going to get any support otherwise. So, you know, and then I wasted uh, most of my life and decreased my lifespan by at least 20 years. But, you know, there's that. Oh, tell your gas station story. That's not really technically related to what we were just talking about, but... <laughs> Cars, oh gas my station. God. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the first time that it happened because the second time was very similar. It was like the remix that we talked about where it's like not different enough to be a new thing. So yeah. um, I was 19 and I drove to the gas station like somebody does who looks for gas. And I was in my Godzilla shirt. I was just in some shorts. I walked in. I'm like, hey, I want 20 on pump seven, please, because I been bougie with my gas purchases and the oh. guy goes are you kidding i'm like i'm trying to figure out what like is he joking with me i'm like no i need gas for my car homie he's like no <laughs> and i'm like wait a minute why he's like i can't sell you gas you're a minor and i'm like okay hold on uh. first of all minors can drive if i was 17 whatever he's like right Sorry. He's like, I'm not comfortable selling you gas. I'm like, dude, how do you think I got here? I'm like, I can show you my driver's license. He's like, how do I know it's not fake? I'm like, I have my driver's license. And then I actually am. Because that's those. what people use their fake driver's licenses for is to get gas instead of drink. <laughs> I know. I pointed it. I pointed my car. I'm like, that is my car out there. Look. And finally, I kept asking for him you know, so many times that he gave it to me. And the same thing happened recently. I'm 21. You know, now I was just in like a t-shirt and jeans and I go in there. I'm like, hey, I want gas in that pump. And she's like, no, you won't. Because she thought I was a teenage boy. I just yeah, don't so understand. Cool. How much do you get paid in that job to actually give a shit about that? All the other I illegal shit going down at gas stations? Are you really going to refuse there's always gas? kids stealing like the 40s. Like, <laughs> out of the back. Like, wh what? Right. And like, I go and I buy alcohol and they never card me so i'm like okay one of you guys is wrong they never card you yeah that's no weird. they have, never card me i have never i still get not been sometimes. carded in my life <laughs> 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 never never ever going to the casino if i move down like a like an aisle of like <laughs> slot machines some other employee sees me and they're like dart their eyes at me and i'm like oh god and they just start like sprinting towards me and they're like can i see some id and i'm like <laughs> they gave they gave me a stamp just so I could show you guys every time. 
that mm-hmm. I I do have ID, so and they're like, oh okay. <laughs> like they saw me and they were like, you know what, you're probably gonna get carded a lot. Let's give you a little stamp. Like they do it like a water park, and I'm like, okay. Right, yeah. And like the thing is, it, it all depends on how you dress, right? Because if I go in, yeah. a lot of times, you know, I'll wear like a suit or something. I wear suits a lot and I'll go in and nothing ever happens because you're not gonna cart a guy in a suit. <laughs> And then I wear like a t shirt. Yeah, it's a 13 like, year old and a little suit. boy. Exactly. Yeah. Going to the Minions movie. Exactly. I was telling Daniel earlier, I was like, I look like if Kirby swallowed Paul Dano. And I think that that's pretty accurate. I cannot, I've never heard of someone refusing gas at a gas station. Yeah. Yeah, for their parents. Like, if well, it's and old, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think you could refuse yeah. that because you buy gas for like, like, like lawnmowers and stuff, you know, right? Sorry, I cut you off. What? No. Who buys I gas? Don't, for I a don't lawnmower? know about how lawn mowers work, but I know they're. You guys never mowed your lawn? Mowers? No. No, I've never. Well, I've mowed girl. the lawn. I don't do lawn <laughs> work. <laughs> no, but like you just get you get one of those big red cartons with the spout, and you go to a gas station, and you just fill it up with the with the thing. Yep. You siphon the gas. You know. yep. So I gotta try siphoning gas because it looks like it shouldn't work, and I kind of want to try it. I don't believe everyone that's siphoning gas. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that when you drink it? That's when, it's when like you It's when you, you suck through the tube and then gravity like pulls the rest of the gasoline out of the car. Do you think they yeah. ever did that in Cars the movie? This camera's mind drains their blood. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, it's just bloodletting for the cars. Right. Right. Yeah. Mater wakes up. He's like, I can't move. <laughs> ah! I mean, they had, they had a car pope, which means there was a dark age for cars. So... Uh, to round out this topic, to get to like a, a, a bite topic we can all talk about. This was still on the Harry Potter remake topic. <laughs> I, just, I just thought this was super funny. So two really short things. One was people are like asking, they're like, they're like, who is asking for people to make these really slight changes to things that don't mean dick? No one's asking for it. Twitter isn't even asking for it. But people are changing mm-hmm. lines and songs and like books. They're changing kids books that are like older to be like nicer. Not even oh, like, like Dr. Seuss stuff. Yeah, but well, not even like ones that like sometimes like those I was like, ah, you know, that was a pretty offensive, you know, yeah. thing. You could change that. Like but Dumbo. I mean, some, but some are like in like just like villain stuff and they're changing it to make to they're like, oh, that's me and against the villains. And you're like, they're villains. They're supposed <laughs> to be. So here's an example. So Roald Dahl, I don't know anything about him. Apparently he was an anti-Semitic uh, person anyway. Really? Because a professor was commenting, they were like, look, Roald Dahl is an anti-Semitic son of a gun. But they were like, people changing his books and changing his stuff after he's dead is really Wait, what, gross. What and I do? was like, I agree. What like James and the mean? Giant Peach and oh. um, who's the girl in the orphanage that has the powers? <clears throat> Matilda. Matilda? Matilda. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and, uh, know that he was. That hurts my heart. I don't, but don't take my word for it. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, so the, the thing, I, the headline I saw that I thought was... I just think it's creepy to go back and edit authors' books. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, just teach teach the kids that this is a bad thing instead of changing the bad thing. You're literally changing history. That's like changing the Holocaust and being like, well, that was bad. Let's just get we rid should, of that. We should you change know? the Holocaust. Guys, <laughs> let's go back. Yes, yes. Just censoring history. Yeah, it's, the, that's that's what that. it is, and I'm just a, such a huge like you can't censor history. That's 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 something Hitler would like. You can't do that shit. Yeah, but anyway, it was it. they were they're doing it with stuff now that no one's asking for. So for example, there was a line in the Roald Dahl book about witches, and they're I'm reading the headline now in the witches. And you know there are a, book, a lot of witches now. Okay, maybe you're a, parag- the a paragraph a, a paragraph explaining that witches are bald beneath their wigs ends with the new line. There are plenty of other reasons why women might wear wigs, and there is certainly nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> who said that <sighs> witches were only women? Oh, and who said being bald was bad? It's just, I don't understand. It's just, it was, everyone was like, and that is very unnatural the way you added that. They were like, it's yeah. just minor changes. Like, that seems like a pretty major change. Anyway, and then the big one recently was uh, with Little Mermaid. The the guy Alan Menken that's done like the music for every famous movie ever was complaining because they were changing um, Ursula's lyrics in the songs because they were like, "Oh, but she's manipulative." Yes, they changed those. Um, <gasps> but that's iconic. Rich, for fortunate being manipul- man. 
<laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> no, but like they, they, the reasoning behind them changing it was because they, they were like, oh, we don't, we're like she's, she's manipulating her. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the fucking point. So anyway, I'm going to read this now. Legendary composer Alan Menken told Vanity that the lyrics to Poor Unfortunate Souls underwent revisions, quote, regarding lines that might make young girls somehow feel they shouldn't speak out of turn, even though Ursula is clearly manipulating Ariel to give up her voice. Like, (laughs) Okay, this one longing to be thinner. This one wants to get the girl. Like, it's not even the part about talking about body types. It's about talking about... Yeah, the body types is the one that I would be understandable about, but it's like... She's trying to convince her to give up the voice. Yeah, anyway. And then the next part, Ursula's famously being the villain of the piece. It's puzzling as to why her track would need to be changed. Uh, Hers isn't the only song that was altered. Men can reveal there are some lyric changes to Kiss the Girl because people have gotten very sensitive around the idea that Prince Eric would in any way force himself on Ariel. Like, I don't think that... I haven't seen this movie in 15 years, but that's... That's not what happens in the movie. That's not what happens in the movie. She wants to kiss him, but, but she, she is yeah, having yeah, exactly. trouble but communicating she can't say it. it. So her friends are encouraging him to like fall for her. It's oh not her God. friends convincing him to rape I was gonna her. Say, like, it's more like they're pressuring him. God damn! Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the fishes and ducks are like kiss her, kiss her. Like, kiss her. Whoa, whoa. Am I high? Dude, if a crab came out and told me to kiss somebody, I would either do it or kill myself because <laughs> I, I would kiss her and we'd be eating. We'd be eating crab that night. Ooh! Oh no, I want crab legs. <laughs> Fuck. <Ooh. laughs> also, they, they weren't like you've got to fuck a digger. Like it's I don't understand. Dude, honestly, the- <laughs> hang on, hold on. You might be onto something. <laughs> Great song. in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. That's anyway. That's all I had on that. I just think that's hilarious. It is hilarious. If you <laughs> want to talk There's... about Disney remake stuff, I saw people complaining about the new Tinkerbell. There's a new um, Tinkerbell. Because she's black. Yeah. That's probably why they were complaining she's, about her. Yes, they're complaining. Wait, so she's what? Black. There's but no wait, wait. 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 Black people complain. Oh, oh, I remember you saying this. Yeah, yeah okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, I sent this to you. I sent this to you. It yes, was a girl because they're not like, making, they're not writing any yes, new black stories. Yes. They're they just like, switching out the old ones stop, and fooling like, people. They were like, race swapping characters to try to give us representation and just like make characters that like apply to storylines that would specifically be black narratives. Not just making an angry, like, sassy character. Like, historically, Tinkerbell's kind of like, you know, she's pretty sassy at turning that character into a black woman. I was like, can't you just make a totally new character or like a new fairy? Or just don't remake fucking Peter Pan again. <laughs> just stop with the remakes, guys. We can make new good content that has good yes. representation and good yes. plot lines and it has passion to it. And it's really not that hard. Yeah. What were you saying? You were talking about, uh, oh, no, this kind of ties into... What we were talking about a couple episodes ago on gay representation, because it's the same thing. They're just taking the oldest, like, shittiest characters that don't make any damn difference to the story and making them gay instead of writing any new characters with any new background or whatever. And it just seems like such virtue signaling, but people eat it up. They eat it up. So I guess either it is absolutely it is. hate it and they <laughs> uh, shoot, shoot it on uh, in their Twitter or they. Uh, they are obsessed with it on their Twitter, and they're like, "Wow, they're they just like me." And I'm like, "You're you're nothing like that 1800s uh, illiterate guy. You're, you're nothing like that." <laughs> I'm like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> uh, but that being said, I understand why people like. There's nothing again. This is part of the judging. Like, I, if people love those characters, that's totally fine. You know, I'm not saying the way any way any, anyone else interprets the character. I guess I'm not I'm not concerned with the way people view them. I'm concerned with companies that are like soulless and kind of just uh yeah. you know just kind of doing just this shit pandering. to <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> general but, pandering uh, it's it's just really boring uh anyway new topic because i'm yeah. so uh this one doesn't connect to anything at all i just thought it was kind of cool um uh so there's a, a dude that runs the front desk at our apartment complex this is not the guy that wasn't there and didn't let me into my room i'm gonna clarify that <laughs> that, uh-huh. that 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 guy sucks so this guy, I don't know if he's new-ish. They kind of have three people that rotate desks. <clears throat> um, I don't want to say, I about said his name. I probably shouldn't say his name. Anyway, yeah. so I've only seen him a few times. 
but I saw him in the hallway coming out of the gym at like 1 a.m. because he was walking the halls and he was like, hey, did I just see you on TikTok recently? And I was like, yo! <laughs> so like I know his name and I like say hi to him every time I leave and stuff. But I was like, what are the odds that the dude that runs my building saw me on TikTok? That is wild, dude. That is so funny. Dude, my friends will send me videos of you and I'm like, don't get me started. That's my boy. That's my boy. Really? That's <laughs> yeah. wild. That's crazy. Angie Angie will oh, screenshot so when people do that. Angie, okay, let me just say this about Angie. Angie is by like by far the longest, like other than like Nick and Julian, like has been the longest constant support on my socials and stuff. She, like she has liked every single one of my videos. Uh, e like even the podcast ones and like the movie ones. Um, he is a sweet and doesn't ever bring it up. Yeah, the nicest person. And she, whenever her friends will like send a meme to a chat, that's my video. She'll like screenshot it and send it to me and be like, I knew Aww. this would make your day. I'm like, yeah, it awesome. does. <laughs> yeah. It makes you should me play so on one happy. of her, her streams when she's playing. That'd be sick. Yeah, I should. Mm -hmm. Just, she'll invite you to her Discord. She has like a bunch of different games that they play on there. Dude, I've popped into like lives sometimes, like just to see like what's going on. Yeah, and like people will react, and I'm like, dude, I did not know that the dumb, sh dumb shit I've made had any effect on anyone. It's of weird. Course. It's super weird. There's a friend yes. of mine now that we've been friends now for maybe a year or two, but he. This brings us into our next topic, actually, that I wanted to talk because it involves all you guys. But uh, he was on bite, like kind of as just an observer, and like hadn't started making comedy stuff um but he said he said like my stuff had inspired him to start doing his own stuff so he now has like over a million followers on tiktok he has his own snapchat yeah, show oh, he damn. like does his own animations and does all this other stuff and he is so incredibly funny that i was like you fucking liar i didn't inspire you to do shit your stuff is so good what are you talking about <laughs> And it's weird. We don't look anything alike, but people will confuse us all the time. And it's so cool that I can respond to them and be like, well, that's not me. But like, that's a friend of mine. And they're like, wait, mm -hmm. you know him? And I'm like, yeah. Brother. Yeah. My twin brother, yeah. obviously. But it's like, it's so funny when they confuse us because his his sketches are like super well filmed, very well like written, like long, like minute, minute and a half, intricate. And I'm like 10 seconds, like from the viewpoint of my chin <laughs> and they'll confuse oh my my, his stuff for mine. I'm like, I'm so sorry that they confuse my stuff for you. <laughs> it just seems was like Daniel sold out. He used to make sketch videos and now he just makes yeah, reaction yeah, yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. The and bike people. Like it's, it's that viewpoint. That's extreme. It's so toxic to creators and it, it makes so many people burn out, get depressed and stop yes. doing shit. Yes. Cause do you know, do you know how long it takes to make a, like a 40 minute like sketch? You know how long it would take me? And I didn't even have like a good phone. The, the front camera didn't work, so I couldn't ever view myself. All the nice skits I made back in the day were from the other way around. I could never see myself, so I never knew whether I was in frame or not or anything. And I'd have to edit them sideways because the editing thing keep I had. Keep cropping them, keep, keep refilming them. I couldn't afford good editing, so I was using this program that was doing it long ways. So I would have to edit all my videos sideways export them and rotate them to, to, to post them. And then each time you exported it, it lost like quality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and then when I switched to something that brought so much less stress to me to make up like mm -hmm. all these super long ass ideas, it saved me hours a day. And I like felt good about the stuff like I was making because if it didn't do well, who cares? I spent like 20 seconds on it. And I was just testing yeah. out a bit and everyone from bites reaction was He's selling out. I don't give a shit anymore. And yeah, to this they day, say that to this day, is some sort of little statement. They they follow me and they won't like anything I make unless it's like a well polished sketch, which I'll do like one out of a hundred. And I'll be like, you assholes see all the rest of the stuff I do. You just actively don't like it, and then will only like as if to be like that was when you were good. I don't give a shit. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kudos. I remember. When I was a kid, I used to be super obsessed with like bands that would sell out and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god, you know, I'm not gonna listen to this band anymore because they got popular uh, and this and that and this mm -hmm. and that. And now that I'm older and I'm like in the working world and I'm, you know, all this shit, I'm like, what a fucking 
stupid way to think. Like, just because you're doing something you love and it's working. Well, and just like people got to pay the fucking bills, you know? Nirvana like, was like yeah. so against mainstream media and then they became like what pop culture was during that generation right. and they were kind of like bruh but they were also like the money's nice <laughs> and I'm exactly like, yeah yes. like you're gonna talk shit on the money but yeah. you're gonna keep making it like okay yeah whatever yeah. it's just so toxic i don't and like again with like they don't expect creators to make any ads whatsoever that guy i was just talking about that friend of mine he made an ad for i forget what that he said has two million views which for an ad is astronomically good and he yeah. was like yeah and he was like yeah but it was kind of cringe they only gave me a day to make it so it's not very good and everyone is just roasting the hell out of me in the comments and i was like look i know that i know that that sucks but like two million views on an ad that is gonna bring in good fucking money like just focus on that you, you worked them you worked the suckers they they engaged with it they did their little comments you know you just gotta focus on on that the stuff. weird but- thing about that is like the stuff that does the best are when people don't explicitly like imply it's an ad like they're supposed to Mm -hmm. Uh, and then like it's clearly an ad and the way they're acting is like okay like some of these influencers are yeah are like really bad actors so like you can tell when something's scripted because Mm -hmm. suddenly their voice like the inflections that are normally there they're just gone it's because they're lying yeah exactly exactly (laughs) yeah and there's so many "Mm and, and <laughs> brands don't understand the algorithms at all. So, like, I've made a lot of ads by now, but, like, I thankfully, most of them are, like, contract-based. Like, I just give the video to them, and they do with it what they will. I don't have to post it on my page because most companies That's are good, good enough now to know that that doesn't work. But yes. anyway, so, mm-hmm. like, like you were saying, a lot of companies initially, it was super strict scripts. You had to say certain things at certain times, and you they wouldn't approve, like, anything funny. And so by the time yeah. you posted it, it sucked all the – personality out of what made you yes. you and why mm-hmm. people watch you so people would roast you because you made a bad ad but it was like look i just needed 150 dollars, so mm-hmm. leave me the fuck alone you know and the best ads i've had are the ones where i've asked them like what do you want me to do and they're like we really don't care like just do what you normally do and just mention our thing and i'm like do you care like when i mention it or how long and they're like nope and those videos do very well because I get to just build them into my fucking idea, you know. Yeah. But these or you don't like don't show it. it right away. You're not like check yeah, this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out, yeah. guys. Wow, this is, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's always like, how they are, though. And they and they and, and a lot of companies will. Sp- I've got so many contracts that say mention it in the first five seconds, and every time I yeah. see it, I'll like roll my eyes. Mo- I mean, because I people down. just scroll by it. Mm-hmm. When I turn, like, I turn no. down probably eighty percent of the ads I get because it's just. They're so restricted. It's just garbage. But yeah, yes. the, the best ones I've had are ads that I don't mention what it is for like 30 fucking seconds. Because mm-hmm. you then get they're people invested. invested in the concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but there are just so many creators I've seen that like are crying. People with millions of followers that get on a video crying because they made one ad, one ad for like $1,000. Like, and their fans <gasps> were killing them. Oh, let's rephrase not fans, just incel men, you know, are mm-hmm. just killing them. And it, it just, it's so garbage. And it's the same treatment I had moving, you know. I, I actually have an article that I wrote with um, somebody in St. Louis, a couple different, um, like, uh, magazines. And we spent a long time talking about h- how you get big on TikTok, because that's the question I get the most. And I'm not going to keep talking. I'm already talking too much. But the main thing I tried to hit in there was, like, TikTok is not for your polished projects. It's not for your your favorite thing to do. It's just for you to shitpost, essentially, because you need to only put in as much time or to get TikTok as much as content your... out there as possible. Some people will yeah. just like spam content and sometimes yeah. that's what works. Well, and that's and that's worse too. Like you don't want to spam either. But like my point was like only my, my saying I'll say time and time again on TikTok is only put into TikTok as much time as you're willing to lose. And if and it sucks now, like when the algorithm is really spammy since January, and like you'll get really low views, and I'm like, that kind of sucks. But initially, it's like, if my video doesn't do that well, originally a video not doing well was like six thousand views, eight thousand. Devastating. 000 views. <laughs> it, and it, I wouldn't give a shit because I spent thirty seconds making a bit that I filmed on the fly, you know, and I had fun with it. I thought it was funny, you know. And then sometimes they'll do really well. And then you're like, oh, cool, bonus. But like I wasn't making videos with the expectation of I put in so much work to this. Please, God, somebody 
give me good, you know, engagement on this. And, it, and then they won't, they don't do well. And you're like, oh, I just spent so long on something I love and no yeah, one Yeah, that cares. hurts. It's not a good, ref- it hurts so bad. And it happens to so many people. And I keep telling the them. stuff like, that you I know- find like the funniest people are like, what the hell are you talking about? This is <gasps> no, too niche. No, seriously. For real, I will put so much work into something. Like whether it be my paintings or my videos and it'll get like nothing. Yeah, no reactions. Nothing. And you're like- And I, I need to do it. So TED Talk does stuff in St. Louis, and I, I, I don't have enough time, but I desperately want to give a TED Talk on this stuff because it's so interesting to me, but it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not the right way to make stuff for TikTok. It is, it's, it's so easy for artists to want to put that, their stuff, like, of course you want to share the thing you love the most, right? But it's like, there's a, there's a place for it, and uh, it's not it. But it's so easy because you see certain artists blow up, like small people yeah. in, a, in a bedroom. But for every one of those, there's a hundred people that are like, so discouraged they never do the thing that they love ever again and we miss mm-hmm. out on so many new icons because of that and it's just tragic yeah. to me uh, it's I, you know anyway i want to talk that's like about lady gaga when she first started out she's like a lot of people shit on me and hate me and it's like i guess this is the way it's supposed to be like you're not gonna appreciate me now but in 20 years you will and that was like when she was like a teenager like saying that stuff and i was like oh facts she already knew she already knew that it was too too like out there for the time and i guess it was but then in the end uh, people people liked her so that's cool <laughs> i mean yeah, you gotta think about like early lady gaga time like do you remember how like we're super accepting nowadays but do you remember yeah. even like back in like 2010 when she would wear like a dress that was a little weird it was like all i heard about yes yes I and remember she's always I been really well, we... really like into promoting the LGBTQ community and showcasing like dancers or like people helping work on her music that are a part of that. And like showing like even like her friends, like she's like, these are my friends. And a lot of them are have been my inspiration. I get a lot of inspiration from like, you know, uh, ball, the ballroom scene. Like she was always like that. And people were like, what the hell is this bitch talking about? And now that stuff is like popular, like RuPaul's right. Drag Race has really like skyrocketed a lot of that into mainstream media. But at the time when she would talk about it, people would be like, can this lady shut the hell up about the gays? And then they're like, why do the gays like her so much? And it's like, because she actually talks why. about yeah. them in like right. the most positive way possible. Like she literally talks about how they've inspired so much art for her. Mm-hmm. Like, like different forms of art um because like her music videos and on their own are like an art form if you watch some of them they are really intense like you here we watch, go like i uh, sorry sorry i like no lady this gaga is good i like sorry. lady gaga too like um i think it's her shoot marry the night music video or something she's like doing some intense acting in it and it was uh talking about like her mental breakdown when she uh she didn't discuss what it was about at the time, but it was because she was um, m- manipulated by somebody at a record label uh, into, like, coercing her into having sex, and she got pregnant from them. And they, like, basically, oh. like, dropped her off at a corner at, like, an abortion clinic, you know, and was like, all right, get it out, you know, like, at, like, Damn. 22 years old. And it effed her up pretty badly, and um, what, really? it was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but Imagine. She- she was like, uh, this is kind of when she was getting noticed by more record labels. Um, but then they kind of all dropped her after that because she was having like a lot of mental health issues from that. And she just kind of like dropped out a bit. And they were like, I thought you were writing all these songs. Like, where are all these songs that you were making? Because she was writing for like Britney Spears and like other artists too at the time. Um and they're like, they're like, you're not producing enough for us. We're going to drop you. And then that made her mental health decline more. And she had to be like institutionalized for a while. So the music video at the beginning is her like acting her ass off, like being in the mental hospital, but like making it like fashionable. Like the nurses all have like these old timey like nurse costumes and they're like little nurse hats are like turned to the side like berets and they're like this is so in season this year and they're like walking down a runway as they're like carting her in the little stretcher thing yeah and everybody's like how'd you not think lady gaga was an actor when she was doing this like 15 years ago she she was spitting back then (laughs) god dropping the gaga lore yeah the gaga lore i'm like i i love her (laughs) 
A lot of that stuff with her, a lot of stuff of that with her didn't find its way on the ears of a bunch of kids in the very conservative Midwest, at least where I was. I don't know, Maya, what your experience was with this. The one that did find its way, the one that I remember hearing about as a kid was at the beginning of that, what you were saying was, uh, no, like, yeah, when she would wear like really like, um, like tight or, or like, like jumpsuits up the thighs and stuff. And people would snap pictures of her crotch and be like, does she have a dick and balls? Oh, Is she one of these hermaphrodites and was... stuff? And oh, I remember God. hearing about that as a kid and being like, what is going on? And I, but like, <laughs> dude. I remember that. Do you remember yeah. that? Okay. It wasn't just, everybody, okay. Everybody was like talking about that. And it was, she would yeah. do like these really uncomfortable interviews where people were like trying to discuss that with her. And so she's like, weird. she's like, who cares if I have a dick? My fans don't. So, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, she, she gives very genuine interviews. Oh, that's the other thing I saw. I'm not a fan of Justin Bieber or anything, but I was seeing clips of all of his early interviews when he was like full on a minor and a child and all of these people very aggressively sexually assaulting him. And him, yeah. he's just calling them out right there on the spot and be like, I, I didn't like that. That made me very yeah. uncomfortable. And I'm like, man, this kid was calling for help and no one was doing shit and all these people are still famous all these people are whatever and that then iconic that, video of the lady like flirting with him and then she's like ha 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 and he's like i like that laugh <laughs> <laughs> like, well and there was and there was uh there was one where he was at an awards show and someone full-on like just i forget if she made out with him or if she grabbed his ass Ooh. first of all he's a minor second of all he didn't ask for that third of all third of all then he goes she's up creepy. to the mic and he was like wow uh I'm not comfortable. Like, he just full on says this. I'm like, dude, I have never seen any of these interviews. And afterwards, what made this even so much worse is that person, whoever it was, that actress or whatever her fucking stupid ass name is, she was interviewed afterwards and the person was like, so what was that on stage all about? And she was like, oh yeah, I full on groped him. Yeah. She was like, she was like, I gotta be honest, I'd rape him if I had a chance or something. She said rape and somewhere in there. And I was like, Uh this isn't real. This isn't real. No way she said this and everyone was okay with it. And it was the wildest shit. And it's like, ha Where is that guy that walked into your school? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Where is Bible Man? <laughs> Where is Bible Man? Dude, I, I bet it was somebody like Madonna. That lady is creepy now. Like It was not Madonna. To, it was she used some, to be I'm an icon in like the 80s, but now she You've she talked about her because she's done a bunch of weird things. Right? Yeah, she still thinks she's like the same age as she was in the 80s or something, like when she was the biggest thing. She she keeps dating guys like that are like 22, 23, and I'm like, mm, and like she knew them as like dancers when they were like minor. Ew, Jenna McCarthy. 18. Jenna McCarthy. Jenna McCarthy. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna look this Who's up because I want to make sure I wasn't misquoting what she says, but I'm pretty sure. Is she the she one that uh, thinks shit. vaccines make you autistic? <laughs> she the one? Know. I don't. I don't. Know. I don't know who this person is. So the name sounds like a mashup of every actor's name, anyway. E- true. Um. Yeah, but do you remember when Madonna like uh pulled Drake's head back and like macked on him and like stuck her tongue down his throat when he was like at an award show and then he pulled away and literally like spit and was like (laughs) and that makes you want to hurl yeah and she was like she was like ah like so offended and it was like bro um he he didn't consent that you just made out with him on stage because that's like the thing you do for shock value she's made out with a lot of people on stage during award shows so she tries to go to the it's, biggest it's such an people at the time. Privacy. It's like Britney and ex Tina. They're the biggest at the time. I'm gonna kiss them. Right now, Drake is the biggest at the time. I'm gonna go kiss him for attention. And it's like, bro, bro, you gotta you gotta plan that into the into the bit if you're gonna okay. do that. You can't just mac on somebody. Two yeah, sides so to that bad. story here. First of all, disgusting, and that's not okay. Second of all, who's like, yeah, I'm gonna kiss Drake right now? Have you met Drake? I haven't, <laughs> but I wouldn't. I haven't. This was also like Drake. Drake claps when ago. the plane lands. All that, all those memes are <laughs> yeah, so memes? good. <gasps> Kill me. Wong, can you do something for me? <laughs> that song came on in the gym yesterday, and my brother was like, you know, 
a lot of people make Drake like make fun of him for like those gay memes, right? But then in this video, he actually is being quite quite digging into that, right? He he really is just straight up sounding like you know the like painted nails emoji. He's yeah, he's he's sounding a bit a bit painted nails emoji. <laughs> This all this stuff still happens today too. Like last year's Oscars, I forget the actress. I like her in stuff. I immediately lost all respect for her, and no one else cared. I guess I just get really uncomfortable when I forget which actor it was that she was like aggressively being horny about at the Oscars, and I was like, I don't know if you asked him if this was okay, but it's it's not. It's really kind of gross, and I was like wincing as she's talking about this, and I'm like, man, people just really think sexual assault with men is a joke. Cool. I mean, they yeah. think sexual assault in general is a joke, but I mean, we kind of moved off. We, for a second there, we kind of went on to bite, and then we moved on. But since we were all on bite, and I don't think we've even talked about this with Nick, but I just wanted to go through a couple questions that I thought were interesting, because this time around, I actually wanted to ask like interview questions, even though we haven't done that for an hour and a half. Sorry, we this is guess. so late time again. Time for interview questions. Time to talk again. I hope I haven't been... I've been here's the thing. When I... <laughs> You're allowed to talk on this, Daniel. It's a podcast. Oh, yeah. How was the cocaine bear man? Oh, he was he was great. There's the two sides of the stand-up comedy thing. One is I'm actually very interested in it. I think with practice, I could get really good with it. That's because cool. the people I watch that I would, do it all I'd the time are not very good. Oh, I was <laughs> terrified the one time I did it. I was fucking mortified, but it was also the first time I'd ever done it. And it still went really well. So I'm like, what if I wasn't mortified next time? Maybe it'd be even better. Uh, but um, so like I'm interested in it. But like so for Maya and anyone else watching that, I should provide context because we're on a podcast. So I went to go see Scott Sice a couple days ago. I found out 1 a.m. the day of that he was going to be in town. And if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. He's like he's the TikTok mil- man. Yeah, big TikTok person, actual comedian um, and does all like the Ikea guy skits. If you've seen those with that music behind where it's like, it's weird for cashiers to sit down and it's weird to care. We're not doing a decathlon. If you hate people sitting down working, you're going to hate what an office is. You know, like... I think about that all the time. Great Yeah, all the jobs where they make them stand all the time. And then like like, people have like workplace injury. Well, not even like injury. It's like, I'm starting to have back problems. And it's like, oh, what do you do? And it's like, well, I stand all day behind a register. And then like Mm -hmm. the employers are like, and? Well, to round out the round out the stand up topic, the the last thing on that was, we were just trying. I was just there was this place that was a nice bar. I've been there a couple times. I mean, not super nice, but it was like a lively bar. Uh, I bar, but a lively bar. <laughs> I wish, but uh, no. And like they, we were just trying. It's just a very simple thing. A friend of mine was like, "Can you get me a show there?" And I was like, "I will." This is going to be very easy. I'm very good at calling people and emailing, and getting shit figured out. Because people want to make this shit work, especially since COVID. These people, their website was down. Well, not down. They don't have a fucking website. And they know they don't have a website. It doesn't work. They don't have a specific phone number. Their phone numbers don't have voicemails. When you go to the place in person, none of them know the schedule of events. None of them know how much it is. And none of them know what you can do about it. There's one guy that knows who was not there three of the four times I went. And the last time I went, because I'm a persistent piece of shit, I, I was, and if it was me, I would have given up a long time ago, but I was like, I told this guy I was going to like do my best and I want to make sure I do my due diligence. And I was there and um, I, I now, now I know the bartenders at this point. I was like, hey, Laura, is in? But uh, she was like, yeah, let me go see what's up. And then like I wait eight minutes and it's karaoke night at 10 p.m. I feel like a cop because I'm just standing in the corner in jeans on my phone and I'm like, I should probably laugh once in a while or smile and make it look like I'm not just, like, a cop. And then like, you do this, I, like, I, really I, uncomfortable giant <laughs> fake smile. And they're like, yeah, that guy's not a <laughs> <laughs> officer. Piano <Yeah. Yeah>, no, man? <laughs> <laughs> I really like karaoke nights when people are, like, terrible singers. I love it. They were That's all like pretty good. Pleasure. Oh, fuck them, then. Get yeah, out. Yeah, it's worse <laughs> when they're good. They were all very attractive and very good. So it was overall a very awful night. Exactly. Well, two things. They were like, uh, those those dates are all booked up now. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know that now because I started talking to you about these two months ago and you're just now responding. And then secondly, they were like, well, we don't like know you. (laughs) We don't really like want to do anyone that's like. 
They don't want to like, what it's anyone? Not, uh, they don't want to accept anyone that's not pre-approved by someone already there that does that stuff. And I'm like, oh, was this a day that they're doing an event? No, no, no. It was an open date. I'm like, okay, are they in residency with you? No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Do they own the bar? No. Then who the fuck cares? It's just so weird. I was like, I've never heard of an actual full-on establishment having to run their events by a comedian that's not in residency, nor do they own the place. And I was like, that is such territorial fucking bullshit. I, I, and then they saw my, they and watched all my that's stories. Just a thing. And they responded to my DM, I think, before they saw like really who I was. Cause then after that, they liked one of my previous messages and they were like, uh, you can DM the booking email for any future cringe. stuff. And that was it. I was like, I will. And I'm, I'm never going to do anything there. I mean, not that they're going to have any fucking openings apparently anyway. But I was like, I was like, what kind of, I just don't understand refusing around 100 people that will be buying your fucking beer and food. That sounds like a lot of money yeah, to exactly. give up. Yeah, exactly. When they make right. you, like, buy stuff to enter, like. Plus this person that supposedly is running the comedy stuff. When they leave, what are you going to do? Like, they're going to leave at some point, right? I mean. I don't know. Anyway, maybe they just won't. <laughs> They've been there Apparently their whole not. lives. I guess. Like when, I guess not. When Nick and I were saying, like, "Oh, is is it like a residency?" and it's like, "Oh no, it's just a small bar." And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah. so these these people are just like, mm, they're gatekeeping." <laughs> and then literally like, the way oh, it yeah, seems yeah, yeah. to literally the way it seems to work here is that a comedian will scout a location and then just yeah, claim yeah. it. First come, first serve, baby. <laughs> I just, like, events, the way I thought events were always supposed to be is, like, they don't give a shit what event you're hosting. Wedding, whatever. Like, as long as you're as long as they either paid. paying the money or bringing the people, they don't yes. care. But, like, turning away mm-hmm. money, that was weird. That was a weird experience. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, anyway, I guess I got to find my own place and fucking claim it. Just in kidding. Seattle, they, like, let a lot of bands come and play at a lot of different locations. Yeah. That's right. just, like, a as you As you should. Here. And they're very open to doing that. It's it's just like a common thing people like to do. It's like, oh, maybe they have a lot of friends who are gonna come to this, and then and then sometimes they do, and they get a lot of money, and then sometimes only a few people come. But it's like, oh, it's a dive bar, anyways. We were probably only gonna have five people in here for the night. Now we have ten. Yeah, we made slightly more than we were going to. Well, it's and it so scares funny. me a little bit because I si- I signed up at Helium for like. It sounds pretentious, but it's called the funniest person in St. Louis, like contest, I guess. They have three. They have three rounds. You you start with like a five minute, and if you move on to the next round, you do like a six, seven minute. Then the last one's like eight or nine minutes. All doable. I was. I'm trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. I was like, sure, why not? But now I'm like, if they're just gonna like throw me off because I haven't done like a thousand open mics with them, that's just gonna be a waste of my fucking time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know how this is going to go. But I mean, I like there was like also a TikToker industry. doing a whole show. So Yeah, I was like, I feel like it's any industry. That's just how it is where it's like, do you and know people? Wh- Who do you know here, bro? And that's like- why they're trying to shut down TikTok and everything. Not just because it's calling out local governments everywhere for all the fucking bullshit they do. Not only because it's uniting students everywhere to all the corruptness going on in the fucking colleges, but also because it's the only place that skips the fucking industry and people can make a fucking brand for themselves beyond mm-hmm. going around the fucking industry. And so all these people, all these clubs and all these fucking things hate it when it's like, oh, you're just lazy. You just, and I'm like, yeah, I'm lazy. I just made a video every day for the last four years. Mm-hmm. I'm very oh, lazy. You, you know what John said <laughs> when he was he was talking about you doing like uh the, the uh, I know I don't want to know it discouraged no me, no, no it was it was a compliment he was like ah oh, at least he's not one of those motherfuckers where they just have their face watching the fucking video next to them and then those Dude. ones get more views than the original. I'd rather video. kill myself than do that. If I ever yeah. do that, if I ever do that, he has full fledged permission to just roast the hell out of yes. me. Dude, there is a special place in hell, right, right next to Satan. Just, just right next to him. And they'll be reacting to hell. They'll just be like, "They're like, this is <laughs> I'm, so funny. I, I'm burning." <laughs> and the worst part is that it works too, because they get like thousands or millions of likes yes. on it. That's the algorithm, man. It's what God. it panders and, to. And it what the step that's even worse, the step that's even worse than that, is. Men with the audiences of incel men that stitch that with female comedians, not just to be like, not just to react, but to 
point out like straight face how bad it is and those rack up more views than the original you know have you seen these you know what i'm talking about yeah. really yeah oh yeah like straight face reacting is uh to women's comedy is a is a thing do i see it on my for you page no because i don't interact with it because i don't like it and i've never seen it but i've seen people reacting to those videos you know what i mean like i've seen people stitching yeah. these and being like this is fucking stupid anyway i conversation topic for you guys that i keep trying to get to i'm so sorry I all right <laughs> Bite. I just got to shut the fuck up. I need to weld my mouth shut. No more bite. No more oh, bite. God. You know what? F bite. Actually. So, so we all at some point had an experience on bites. I wanted to hear from you yes. guys because I don't even think we fully talked about this, Juliana. But, excuse me. <clears throat> First of all, when did you guys come on bite? <laughs> we were- <laughs> Caught that one. <laughs> What was your first bite experience? Like, I can't remember. I know, Juliana, you weren't there for the beta. But, like, when did you guys first experience bite? Like, at what point in time? I had seen a post about it. I don't remember on which social media platform. It might have been Instagram. Oh, sorry. Like, quick to clarify for anyone that doesn't know what this is because it's dead. And it's it was originally V2. Yeah. It was originally Vine 2 designed by the guy that made Vine originally. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> And that's what caught me because I was on Vine and I was obsessed with Vine. I still think of it every day. And I'm like, it's coming back. And this was during quarantine too. And I'm like, now's my chance to just get on there. And I didn't get on there to be like popular or anything. I was like, I just missed the Vine experience. And when I got on there, I saw that there were people from Vine on there. Um, And so I just kind of started making videos and then people started reacting to them. And I'm like, wait a minute, people like my videos? And so it just kind of took off from there. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's also what I, that's also what happened with me. I think my friend said Juliana. Me a Juliana, link how big was from Twitter? How big? Can you hear me? How how yeah. big was your how big was your profile? Remind remind everybody. Like you had a on, profile on Vine. Vine. It was pretty big. Yeah, a Vine. Well, yeah. It was. It wasn't like me. It was my brother. <laughs> and I, like I had a. I, yeah, but you were in okay, a lot of the videos at the time. I did not like want my presence online like anywhere. So. Anytime I made, like, a profile on things, even if it was, like, for a school account, I would make it, like, slightly not my real name. So a lot of stuff, I would just use my brother's name and then use a picture of my brother and then I would post from it. And then <laughs> and then one of my friends from high school ended up getting really into, like, like, she was like, dude, we're so funny. We should record this. And I was like, oh, we can post it on Vine, right? And then, and then we did. And then people liked that stuff. My profile didn't have like too many followers honestly but her profile which we posted our sketches to and we did like most of our sketches included both of us in them so she had a lot of followers and she had how many i don't remember i don't I, remember i thought um, you had said something like 20k or something like it was she decent. had she had something like that like towards towards the end when we were getting really big it was so devastating because we had just found out Vine was like they were in the talks of like having it come to an end and we were like no yeah. no 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 because a bunch of like people who were not like the um like popular page like creators but the ones that uh would pop up a lot on there like what do you call them like Josh Durnit type people like the ones where it's like people know of them but they don't really know who they are it's like oh i've mm. recognized he's had a couple that have blown up or whatever like people like that were finding a lot of our videos and then they were rebiting it or re revining it and uh that's like how a bunch of popular people uh found her videos and then they started following her and then started also rebinding those and then uh as a joke, we kind of, like, would message them, like, DM them. And at the time, Vine let you send six-second clips as a DM. So we would just be that. like, yeah. And it was always really goofy. And we'd just be like, dur, 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 we like your video where you're the goat man. That's a good one. And then, like, the dude responded back to us. And my friend ended up meeting the guy. And they ended up becoming really close. Oh. And, uh, yeah, he, he ended up promoting, like, quite a few of our videos and stuff so that That's was how awesome. how they got a following my His friend name was also, jeffrey epstein <laughs> oh yeah i was like my friend also did hook up with him in front with of jeffrey the national epstein. in front Sorry, of the national no monument and then she's like <laughs> i saw his national monument and i was like oh <gasps> <laughs> 
what was uh, your first, if you can remember what were, if you can't remember your first Byte video, what was like the first stuff you put on Byte, I should say? Mine was a singing one. I think definitely recreating some of my vines, like as an adult, because I was hoping that some of my vine friends would find me. <laughs> be like, hey guys, it's Jane's addiction counseling, look. Yeah, I was, I was kind of hoping stuff like that would happen too. I, I posted some of my old vines on there too. Oh, I for like, sure, pretty, I think I did. Pretty early times. on. I was like, anybody remember? Anybody mm -hmm. remember this sh Do you remember the first people you followed on Byte? Like the first people, not like famous people you already knew, but I mean like people where you're like, oh, these people are good. Like, these are new. I like this. I want to see more. I don't remember their names. There was one guy who I thought was really funny. Um, I followed Zach McMillan. I like his music stuff. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He lives in St. Louis. I think I followed, uh, what's his name? De Demi? Demi? What's his name? Daniel. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Demi, Demi. How do you pronounce? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, I like think he was the comedy. first, first person I followed on there. I just, I don't know. There was something he posted on there. It was like, he got hit by like a, a yoga ball or something. Like he had somebody oh. throw it at him, and it was just something goofy like that. But it was like when it hit him, it was like the Taco Bell sound effect, and I just thought that was really funny for some reason. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember B Genix was one of them. Yep. I love I love B Genix. Gotta love the early ones. He's and a, of course very nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's another one that got bullied off that shit because they were all insane. I remember oh, him yeah, saying that. Did. Yeah, we talked a little bit after bite ended. Um, he kind of dropped off. I think he might have deleted his Instagram or something, um, okay. or he blocked me. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I, I, I don't you. think he would do that. He no. after uh, he got whatever. off of. Bite, he kind of like messaged a bunch of us and like had like a, a a group on discord and he's like does anybody want to do yoga challenges with us and so like Aww. he would like encourage people to be like healthy and be like oh post and post a picture to show like you went on a walk today or like you wrote down like a affirmation type thing or Aww. like uh how how many minutes you did yoga today and and i was like this is so wholesome Dude, his profile picture on Discord is still the art that I made for him, and that makes me so happy. Really? That was yours? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Thank you. Nice. Huh. I cannot believe I used the profile picture I used for so long. The shittiest picture, and I only had it in black and white. Yeah, it's Didn't the black it and white color. picture where it's like all you can see like other heads cropped out. Like you can yeah, see yeah, Daniels yeah, in yeah. a group photo, and it's just him like I'm amazed. <laughs> staring I'm amazed at I'm amazed that anyone followed me with a profile picture like that. And that's what I was on. Every I only had three pictures of myself that existed because I I don't like myself, and uh, I was so pumped. Uh, so Amanda made me a fan art. Um, I don't know if she was on Vine, but she was big bigger on Byte. Um, and I loved the fucking thing she made so much. And then I commissioned her to make the profile picture. I mean, like honestly, being completely real, even me being on here right now, I'm like, what the fuck. <laughs> Because you were somebody that I followed, and I'm like, this is so fun and so cool. And, ah. you know, I, I love all you guys so much, and I don't know. Daniel and I talked about your videos all the time. Like, we, didn't, <laughs> yeah. we didn't know you, but we were always like, who's the funniest person on bike to you? And I was like, I know. I know. And then Daniel was like, oh, my God, yes. And Juliana yes. was the first person I messaged when I when you were in the live and I found out who you were. I was like, Juliana, guess who's online? Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you met me and you're like, oh, God, I regret it. And I put one of your and I put one of your videos on my story and I got like 10 replies from people being like, love her shit. I was like, like oh, my gosh, she has other social media. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm in my bed. I, I'm gonna poo my. It's face. because all the icons like you don't like make the stuff more that I, people idiots like me are left to fill the gap with all our bullshit every day. She was calling me an icon. I'm gonna cry. Yes, obviously <laughs> an icon. Are you kidding me? Don't you'll just like make a. Not. You'll just make. You'll just make a casual video with like the coolest choker I've ever fucking seen, <laughs> and it's like a gas oh station gosh. car. Like, yes, oh, this is like awesome. <laughs> the fits randomly just like in Dude, the, the random of, in and the each fit is very different like, but yet fantastic it's like man <laughs> i have three shirts and one jacket <laughs> why is she dressed like a victorian vampire right now and it's just like, i love it thing yo out into the middle of a field and i was like 
Schmood. And then you casually <laughs> will drop like super funny like puns, like where it's like you interacting with another character. And, and then like nobody, nobody reacts to them. And I'm like, how I do know. people just not get them? Do they not okay. get this? <laughs> Here's the thing. People Here's are thing. stupid. Here's the thing. I know that my jokes are dumb because I make them dumb because it's the same yeah. point of like, I don't pour my soul into it. And we've talked yeah, about it. Yeah, exactly. That because exactly. It's like, I like it. But I think dumb say. stuff is funny. Cringe stuff is funny. What were you, did anyone, so back to anyone following you back that you were like. A prob- it was probably like Nick or something like that, actually. I <laughs> Like initially he posted like oh. quite a few and I thought they were funny. And then I was like, oh my God, this guy, this guy's like uh, not a bot. Cause like, I thought a lot of people on there would just like repost from other social media. Oh, I thought for mm-hmm. sure. So, yeah, I remember that. so I was like, oh, nobody like is actually using this app. And then like Nick commented on something and was like, Arr! like laughing emoji and was like, this is so stupid, but I love it. And I'm like, oh, there's <laughs> real people on here. This is- remember the guy that did the Batman vines? Oh yeah, bad yes. dad. That guy followed me. We've talked. We talked a couple oh, yeah, times. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. he follows me anymore. I think oh. it's always funny when I check back and they don't oh. follow me. Er- Eric Dunn followed me for a bit. Like that was cool. Um, nice. I've got there. I've got a lot on. Uh, like the more of those I get are from like TikTok, but TikTok doesn't show you. Like you can't filter your followed followers by like verified or anything. So it's it sucks because you can never see like who's following you essentially. But occasionally, mm-hmm. like I comment. have so many people following me, I can't find all. That's the not what I'm want. saying. That's <laughs> not what I'm saying. Fuck off. But like, so I'll only know if they comment something or if they DM me. And at some point, Garrett Watts DM'd me, and he was like, "Your stuff is so goofy. I love it." And I died because mm-hmm. I was like, "Holy shit!" Uh, and he's like, never on TikTok, so I don't even think I was following him on TikTok. He makes a video once every three months or something. And I was like, I'm not following him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I like ran to like go do it. Um, oh, there's, um, uh, I think Pinup Pixie, I think is her name on TikTok. She has like 11 million followers and she was Damn. following me. And so I obviously followed her back. Her stuff is like funny and she does a lot of like cosplay and a lot of like super cool, like antique, um, like furnitures and like restorations and stuff. Oh, Charlie Cooper. That's my exciting one. Oh, Charlie yeah, Cooper was, liked my funny. shit. And we, we occasionally, will t- I, we need to get, get, get him on the podcast at some point. But he, when I found out he liked my stuff, I was, I, and he wanted to do a collab. He had never done any collabs. And he asked me to do a collab with him. And I was like, oh! And then I was like, I'm so honored. And he was like, actually, this is the first one I've ever done. So I don't know like what I'm doing. And I was like, and you're choosing to spend it with me. Oh my gosh, okay. thank you. Aww. And then I soaked at it, but <laughs> it was still funny. Thank His stuff put. is so good. His delivery is absolutely godlike. But He's so good at uh, doing like the cool. dumb guy voice where he's just it's like so good. It's he's like so him enthusiastic. Into the room and he's just like, what, what, what's that? Like, like his concepts, so- his concepts were good anyway, but like he could just say a dumb line that wouldn't work like for the anyone poop else. Like the wizard or whatever. But his delivery <laughs> would be so good. Like he'd be like, "Oh, hey, it's Bill!" Like he would just be like so enthusiastic with it all the time. It was so funny. That was cool. So but like cool. he and I were like, he, me, me, Charlie, Kevin, and a few others were the only people that were like posting consistently until like it died in March, like the right. first three months. And uh, but it was interesting because until March, Charlie and I posted twice a day, and it if it got below a thousand likes, like that would have been a problem, like that would have mm-hmm. meant like ooh something's up, like that was kind of the schedule. And then we got to March, and we were all like, man, can you imagine if videos got below a thousand likes? That'd be bad. And then at some point we were like, man, imagine if videos got below five hundred, damn. And then at some point we were like. Oh, man, imagine oh, if they yeah. got lower than 80. You know? God, it's like the app kept dying. Yeah. So funny. Oh, and, and Kevin Saxby. Uh, I like freaked out when he thought I was funny. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And now I now I know he only lives like he, he lives in Vancouver, which is like straight up from Seattle. So very close to me, just right beyond the Canadian border. So I need to visit him so bad sometime. He was like, come on out and we'll do some open mics. And I was like, uh, you mean come out and I'll watch you do an open mic? Sure. <laughs> Good idea. He's getting married. And I was like, that's really cool. What do I have to do to get Saw into that, that wedding? <laughs> 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 so 
up. Right. Uh, <laughs> the last question I had was from either Byte or just in general. It doesn't have to be a video. It can be art or something else. What is like a something that you've outputted creatively that is your favorite? I know exactly what it was. Say it. Yeah. It was the bite. And this is so stupid. It was the bite where I was in my car and I take a video of the sky and I go, look how pretty the sky is. And I go, but alas. Last. She, yeah, pales, she pales in comparison to my voluptuous wiener. <laughs> it's a good one. The wiener. I love that we were all three of us quoting it. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I should make a list of my favorites because a bunch of my favorites are ones that did not do well at all. I just think the concept is fucking hysterical, even if I couldn't mm -hmm. like do it right. Like there's one that I always liked that I've reposted it a few times back in the day. Never did well. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> it was st so stupid. It was, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It was Watson getting fed up with Sherlock solving everything all the fucking time and he wants to stump him so bad. So he just goes into the crime scene, takes a shit on the floor, and asks him like where it came from. And Sherlock goes into this whole thing, and then he's just like, "Ah, I got you! I shit on the floor." <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Just to That's switch really funny. you up. And I was just doing dumb accents. I was like, "What did you mean to say that as we were standing here milling about, that you were I was shitting my trousers, Sherlock?" And he's like, "Oh, Watson." It's so what? dumb, but I cried making that. And I was like, come on, guys, come on. Poopy joke, so funny. Bad. The other funny one that I liked that actually did, it's it was one of my best videos for a while, was the, the Popsicle Bridge video. Uh, and the only reason that one is my favorite was because it's one that I will never be able to mimic ever again. It's just, I got completely lucky with the timing of how I filmed it and stuff. But that, I remember that night specifically because I was super depressed. I was like going through some trauma shit. I, it was like three in the morning and I was trying to make this video so bad. And I was just refilming it over and over and over and over again. I hated every take. I hated all of myself, my delivery. And then I finally hit one and I was like, that's it. That's perfect. I don't know how I did that, but that's the perfect take. And it was, it's like, I, I see it all the time in like, like new Vine comps and stuff. I'm like, that's cool. That's really cool. It's the dumbest fucking video. <laughs> I, I, I like the one when you uh, do the mirror loop one. Oh, I love that one. I'm glad you appreciate that one. It took so long. Oh my gosh, that Good. took me 15 hours to edit. And then Damn. people like John are like, man, I wonder why he doesn't make fucking edit. <laughs> yeah, that took me a long time to edit. Um, may have pulled the most of an all-nighter on that because it just kept, it was an easy shot to edit but it just kept getting more and more complicated. Like my arm would cross something, like damn, I have to mask that out and do this extra thing. And then damn, like the light's shifting so that the sink isn't the same brightness in the beginning as it is in the end. Damn, it kind of refocused so the light switches out of spot. And it was like all this oh. stuff I had to fucking fix. And I had gone too far. I was like, I can't turn back now. I have to finish it. And it did turn out really well. It turned out to be a perfect loop, I think. It yeah, looks it really good. Loop. But if you focus, I would love to do like a like a, like a, take a look at this, you know, because if you look carefully, you can see certain things fading in the background to something else, but it's, it's so <laughs> slight. You would never know if I didn't point it out, but it's really cool. I, I enjoyed that. I remember I love special Kaden effects. made a video where he Kaden, was like, yes. yeah, he was like, he was like, oh, I was just going to like casually like show like my books that I was reading. And then he's like, then I realized that they were casting a shadow. And then as I was editing it, I realized I could make it like into a perfect circle of like the books going in a circle and the shadow looking like time was like, yeah, yeah, passing uh, through the day. And then he's like, and then it took me 12 hours to edit. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh. Right. Those are the I best videos when something happens in them accidentally and you're like, that actually is funnier than the idea I was going for. So I'm just going to keep that. Those I are so fun. Happens. I have one saved in my drafts because the thing with me is I'll make a video. Juliana knows this. I'll make a video. I'm like, this is funny. And then three days later, I'll be like, I actually don't know what's funny anymore. So I'm just never going to post that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a video I made the other day where someone was like, it's a stitch because I do that <laughs> shit now. I steal from other people. But this guy was like, did you know that you can flip off everyone in the world by doing this? And he spins around in a circle, like with his fingers out. And it, then I just had one of me in the dark and I'm like, but what if I'm in your sewer? What then? And I start laughing and then my computer screensaver turns on. So it's just this bright light and I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, 
It's, <laughs> it's like, so don't... dumb, but it's so no, funny to me. It. I don't know if I'm ever going to post it, but it, Why? It's, it's so funny. It just looks like someone cracked open the sewer and just ruined the bit. It's funny. And I just that's I reacted, hilarious. and that, it's so stupid. That's but I love funny, it. though. Yeah, that's like when you send me and Nick stuff, and you're like, would this offend someone? And there's like literally <laughs> nothing offensive in it, like whatsoever. And me and Nick are like, uh, what What about it? And then he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's so self-hating now. Like he, he'll say something and then Ow. he's like, he's like, oh my God. People are going to be like, well, as a man, you wouldn't understand. Uh, but, uh, and I was like, what does that have to do with anything we were just it's, discussing? <laughs> and, it's true. He was just talking to me earlier. And he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't want to mansplain. And it was like, am I being, am I being rude? Am I talking too much? It's like, he uh, talks like for 30 seconds straight without anybody else saying anything. And he's like, I I'm talking too long. <laughs> Someone please say something. I'm, I'm noticing a lull. I'm going to change the topic now. And I'm like, Daniel, please. It's okay. <laughs> Nothing's it's okay. We love you, Daniel. Thank you, Maya, for being on. Sorry, we sucked up so much of your damn time. You're good, fam. Please, everyone, go to bed and die. <laughs> <laughs> Just the plan. The world is hell and nothing's ever going to change. Goodbye. <laughs> well, good night. <laughs>